you can you new democrats strongly condemn president putin's flagrant aggression against ukraine and we stand in solidarity with the people of ukraine my thoughts go out to all ukrainians who are worried about this unprovoked and unjustified attack by russia war always brings terrible loss of life and human suffering and as canada has welcomed a significant population of ukrainian canadians i spoke with some of them today who shared their worries their fears spoke with a young man whose parents still live in ukraine and despite the fact that his parents live in the western region which hasn't seen as much military action his family lives just kilometers away from where rockets fell i spoke with bodana and she shared with me her fears that she can't sleep at night she has family and friends she's got cousins that she's trying to sponsor and she can't sleep at night without making sure that they're okay she hasn't slept many hours over the past number of days she's constantly checking in constantly worried that something might happen these are just two of the many many stories of ukrainian canadians who are deeply worried about what's happening in ukraine and in this serious crisis i want to outline two specific things or two specific areas where canada can play a significant role in supporting people in this time one is with stronger and more severe sanctions and secondly is with an emphasis on humanitarian relief i'll begin with the sanctions the liberal government must used must continue to use all tools to deter putin's aggressive actions and what we can specifically do is to impose additional economic sanctions where it hurts where it hurts putin and that's by sanctioning putin's closest uh, oligarchs i spoke with bill browder who is the author and the motivating force behind the Beninsky laws in Canada and the Beninsky ask in in Beninsky act in other countries. He has outlined that the current sanctions that are in place both uh, in Canada and in other countries ignore many of the ultra wealthy oligarchs who hoard Putin's wealth. These oligarchs are well known through the diligent work of many activists and advocates including Mr. Browder. We can use the Minsky laws in Canada. There's two categories, both uh, one for human rights violations and secondly for corruption. We know who these oligarchs are. Many of them were identified by Alexei Navalny, who was a political opponent we all know that what Putin in prison tortured and attempted to kill with poison. we need to use the tools that we have to hit putin where it hurts the money that he's hoarded in the names of the oligarchs whose money is uh whose money is in country or the money their resources are located in countries around the world we also need more tools to identify where oligarchs are hiding their money and to deal with money laundering in general we can accelerate the creation of a publicly available nationwide beneficial ownership registry this would provide transparency on property ownership in canada including those owned by oligarchs who we know have property in canada and the current timeline for this registry is 2025 which is simply too far away putin's greed is well documented it is his weakness it is well known that the oligarchs hoard his wealth the wealth that he has stolen from the russian people we need to stand up to putin and do it in a way where it hurts him most and that is his wealth and that is by sanctioning those oligarchs with the tools that we have we need to do that that would have a significant leverage in putting pressure on putin to end this war secondly we need more support in humanitarian aid and i break that down into two areas since russia invaded crimea in 2014 1.5 million ukrainians have been displaced from their homes many came to canada after the initial invasion 8 years ago and have successfully resettled in communities across the country with russia's current invasion of ukraine the situation for people on the ground has become unfathomably more dire ukrainians will be seeking safety and refuge in canada and for years we've been calling for visa free access for ukrainians 
and calling for urgent action. That's what we need to do. The government must work collaboratively to support and resettle those who've been displaced by this escalating humanitarian crisis. We need to automatically expend, extend expiring documents and permits for all Ukrainians currently in Canada. Those who are already here should not be compelled to return to severe risks and danger in Ukraine. We need to make sure it's easy and that there is a barrier-free access for people who are seeking refuge and safety. We also need to increase humanitarian aid. Ukrainian people need our support more than ever, and Canada needs to plan for that humanitarian aid. The crisis is worsening. Families are torn apart. Children have been killed. Over half a million Ukrainians have fled the country in a few days, with many more internally displaced. All children in Ukraine, at least 7.5 million, those that are under 18 years old, are in grave danger of physical harm, severe emotional distress, and displacement. Canada must work with our allies, including the United Nations, to respond appropriately to this terrible situation. As we've seen with the Syrian crisis, neighboring countries who host refugees rely on significant support from those donor communities to ensure that the basic needs of the refugees and local populations are met. So we ask the government to ensure that additional funds to Ukraine will not be diverted from the existing humanitarian envelope that continue to necessitate Canada's attention. We are pleased to see the matching funds for the $10 million with the Red Cross, but this is just a drop in the bucket in terms of the massive needs. We need a plan with significant financial commitments to helping Ukrainians, both within Ukraine and those who have managed to get to safety in neighboring countries. Members of Canada's humanitarian coalition are operating in Ukraine and its neighboring countries. They also deserve our support. Canadian uh, community, the Ukrainian community in Canada is also offering to provide support and is raising funds. We need to support those efforts as well. We know that there will soon be a UN call for funding and Canada must provide its fair share of support for this call. The NDP firmly condemns President Putin's actions against Ukraine. We are firmly on the side of the Ukrainian people. We understand that all Ukrainians are upset by this attack by Ukraine, an unprovoked attack. War always leads to terrible human suffering. Earlier today, I speak, spoke to Canadians of Ukrainian origin. They are extremely worried for their friends and family in Ukraine. We must help, urgently help, increase sanctions against Putin's oligarchs, increase humanitarian aid to Ukrainians and to organizations that seek shelter that help those who seek shelter. We must also help refugees seeking ref uh, shelter here in Canada so that they can arrive here in complete safety. We must recognize that Ukrainians seeking safety from the dangers right now in their homeland do not have months to spare. The most urgent action is required. The government must do everything in its power to help these people find safe haven from the threat of violence in Ukraine caused by Russia. You Democrats stand in solidarity with Ukraine, with the people of Ukraine. We commend and acknowledge their courage, and we will offer, and we encourage this government to offer all help possible to support them in this time of need. Thank you.